Hey, it's John from CrossFit Dynamo. I'm here with Eric Lamblum of Leadership Developed, and uh, we're going to start a multi-part series on leadership and uh, how to grow into becoming a better leader and, and um, uh, why that's important to CrossFitters in general. Uh, Eric comes from, uh, he was a captain in the Marine Corps, four tours of duty, three in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. Um, he was a helicopter pilot that uh, would actually fly into hot LZs to evacuate down soldiers. So uh, he has seen a lot more than most of us have <laughs> ever even thought about. Okay, um, so he's been through a lot, he's got a lot of great experiences um, and, and done, done a lot as a leader in his field in and out of the Marine Corps. So um, I guess the, the first thing, Eric, that we want to talk about is... Um, you know, why, why, is, why is leadership important? Why, why do we want to, you know, so, why, why does it help us to be a better leader? So eventually what happens is um, everyone's going to have a moment or a moment in time where all eyes are going to be upon them to find out or to be, a hey, we need you to lead something. And so um, it's important that people be prepared and ready for those moments and take advantage of those moments when they are looked at to say, hey, people looking for leadership, can you lead us? Yeah, okay. And it's very important that, you know, the, the more that you have planned to it in your head, um, the better you are to um, jump to the opportunity. Yeah, basically just having an array of skills, ready, ready to implement it at, at all, right? Correct. Uh, it can lead to what? Missed opportunities, right? For right. advancement, whether, whether it's in your business or your personal life. Um, or just keeping your community safe and sound, you know? <laughs> or keep yourself alive. Yeah, right? that's Sometimes, true. I would guess. Or, yeah. Um, right. Okay, so um, let's let's talk about uh, pro probably the hardest thing is being, keeping your head in mm -hmm. leadership uh, under adversity. Okay? Okay. Can, um, well, first, uh, if you could give us, like, an example of an adverse situation where you had to, like, just take over. Mm -hmm. And then, if you can, just step me through what your priorities were and uh, to get to the outcomes you needed. Yeah, so um, back in 2007, on my third deployment in Iraq, um, I lost... This is the Purple Foxes? This is the Purple Foxes. Cool. Okay. I, lost, um, I lost a few friends in a, uh, a helicopter that was shot down by the enemy. Mm. And uh, the day, the moment that we were notified, the, com the commanding officer of the squadron brought us all together to inform us that we lost our friends to an enemy service to air missile. Once everybody dispersed back to their shops, offices, apartments, wherever, they all isolated to themselves because they're hurting, they're, you know, and all that other stuff. Right. Um, at the time, I was in charge of the emergency reclamation team, which is um, the guys who go out to the field to go uh, get the secure parts of the aircraft. And as a leader, though, it was important for me to take everyone out of this internal feeling sorry moment, and which is a natural moment, not to take away from it, but we had a sure. job to do. Sure. Um, and it was important that we that I got their attention, that I showed empathy, that I was hurting too because I lost three of my good friends out of that. And um, then to get their minds thinking about what comes next. How are we going to go out to the battlefield where we don't know where the enemy just relocated yet. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the uh, security of the location is like. And we, but we know we have our, four, our seven friends who are sitting out there, or who are laying out there, who need to be brought back to their families. Right. So just to be clear, mm -hmm. you're a Marine. Yes. Um, you're landing in the hot LZs, landing zones. Yes. But you get to shoot back. Right, right. right. So yeah. you, you, there's, uh, you have more, a little bit more control of the situation than some of your own. Yeah, so as a flight leader, so you're also, as a flight leader, not only of your aircraft, but your escort aircraft as well, you also help, you know, he, He's the gun, you know, he has guns, you have, you know, we have guns, but at the same time, I'm the guy in charge of all, where all rounds come off the aircraft to impact target areas. Gotcha. And so, yeah, that becomes another, because there's friendlies, I mean, there's locals, there's, you know, civilians, and you're like, you gotta think, <laughs> exactly you gotta right. think of who's gonna get hurt. That's right, exactly. You don't right. want any more hurt Okay, people. so the adversity is you're putting yourself, your equipment, and your team Mm -hmm. bodily, uh, in, in, in the way of potential bodily harm. Correct. Um, 
with not a lot of uh, information. Correct. Uh, and you've got multiple missions, right? You gotta, you gotta get the bodies back. You've mm -hmm. also gotta get important proprietary information mm -hmm. back. So you've got multiple things that have to be done um, to get you and your team back safely. So can you step me through? And, and at this point, you're still emotion, you're, you're emotionally rocked at the same time. Yes. So your first step back was one, uh, got to get objective. I got to mm -hmm. get out of my emotional state, at least for the time being, I'll grieve later. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what was the next step after that? The next step was to get them, get the team out of their emotional state okay. to get them thinking about what needs to happen, not before them, but for those families. So we gave, I gave them a, an objective. Okay. So Great. creating an objective, which is easy with adversity because in most adversities, there's a defined um, antagonist or a mm -hmm. defined, you know. Yeah, so they're rather right. Right, exactly. And that's easy. That's one of the easiest points for most, especially in the military, to rally people around and find that adverse point. Um, and then, you know, bring them together and create that as the goal to overcome. Sure. And um, so you use those points, and you see it a lot. You see it a lot in the civilian world. And even, you know, Let's take you know corporations do the same thing, right? They're gonna rally around a solution that they're or a problem they're gonna solve, and then they create they bring everyone together to say this we're gonna solve this problem. We're gonna solve you know pharmacy. We're gonna solve COVID, right? Sure. They rally everyone together. We're right. gonna solve this, and then they that's have right. a vision and they have a direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's pretty much the same thing we're doing. We're just now doing it on an amplified scale that has immediate impacts and consequences. Yeah. But as you're heading into the landing zone, are you, you're prioritizing objectives, right? You're always prioritizing. You're also, with this one, so we never launched for this one. But any other, um, any other casualty evacuation that we'd have to do, you get, the, you get probably 30% of the information of what's going on that scene. You know mm -hmm. where the location is, you know how many people are injured, and who needs, uh, you know, if they need immediate, you know, a doctor on board with you. Mm -hmm. um, so you pretty much have that information. And then you're going in going, okay, where's the bad guys? Where's the friendlies? Uh, which way is the wind blowing in from? Which way is the sun? Is the sun out? Right. Um, is there, you know, how much visibility of clouds and dust? Dust in the Middle East is worse than clouds because it degrades your engines and mm -hmm. all that other stuff. So now you're prioritizing all this in your head simultaneously. Power lines and other obstructions, right. buildings. Right, right. right. yeah, because right. I don't right. I only know what the map says, but the map's from 1983 and it's 2003 and we're going, what, um, what is out there? How do I, so what you have to do then is you create assumptions and with assumptions, you're, you don't keep them to yourself. You have to voice those assumptions. I assume this. Do you agree? Yeah, and the team can come back going, I don't think so. I remember last time that we did something like this. This happened instead. Mm. And so by creating assumptions that are group built and not individually built allows it to be a little bit clearer picture because now you have multi points of view coming, mm -hmm. creating that assumption. Get past the fog of war. That helps. The, yeah, right. But that, the, it always helps whether you're captain or your, or maybe, sorry, maybe, yeah. or your, uh, you know, uh, first Louis or a yeah. private, you know, yeah. as, if you're getting some kind of say, oh, yeah. right, as part of the organizational and port, uh, part of the, the, the direction you're going in. Well, that's the biggest thing, right? In Marine Corps aviation, that private, that guy in the back seat has as much say as, a, as me because his life's involved too. Mm. Plus, mm. we promote that culture. We promote that culture of inclusiveness where we all sit together in the you know, space before we go launch for the day. Right. So, and we talk, this is, what's gonna, this is what we can expect to happen, what are your concerns? And you look at each person individually and I always start off with the youngest guy. What's your concern? Okay, so uh, you show some empathy, obviously, to get everybody back on board. Correct. You, um, Got buy in, Always for lack of a better yeah. word, right? Um, but then at the end of it, right, mm -hmm. as you're taking off or whenever, uh, or, or just before you're boarding, mm -hmm. everybody has a flight plan. Everybody knows what they're going to be doing, how we're going to be doing it. Right. And that's um, years of training to get to that point. You know, right. it's not just like we talked about the day of. You don't get to those points that people see like, oh, you're just, you know, as a Marine officer, you just give orders. I don't give orders. I worked for years to get people buying in. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and to a point where we have, if you have to move fast, I can say, let's do this. And they all nod their heads because okay. they know where it came it's from. Trust, right? Yes, right. Okay. they know where it came from. We didn't just make it up or I'm not just, you know, saying right. that. But in, in time of adversity, your steps are get the buy-in right. from, the, from the group. Yep. Make sure that everybody's on the same page. Right. right. Make sure, yeah, make sure they're, yeah. Well, first of all, get them from internal to external. That's a big thing in the Marine Corps. Get, them, get your team from internal to external, show empathy, and then get buy-in. Okay. And then drive, and then drive year. with the best. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. So, uh, in, in, uh, now you're working with organizations yeah. to do the same type of thing, right? Right. So you're working with the heads uh, of ma managers and, and, and leaders within a community or Correct. within an organization um, mm -hmm. to, to do the same types of things. Correct. Right? First is take a step back, go from internal to external, yeah. of take a view of what's going on. Um, we always talk about Jocko, we always talk about take that step back, take a look at what's going on. Same thing. I don't, you know, no matter, every military guy will agree with him. Yes, stop. Take a step back, evaluate the situation, mm -hmm. sometimes, um, and then create, you know, create an action. Yeah, I, you know, I, I guess the the best real world scenario that I have mm -hmm. so that I can relate to this is when COVID first started hitting, like mid March. How did that impact you personally inside? Well, um, to some degree, how it impacts me personally because I have. My dad's elderly, right? Right. And uh, we were moving him at the time mm -hmm. from Huntsville to here. I didn't want to infect him. But the other thing was that the impact of the gym, right. my business, right. and the impact of, of um, the health and fitness of all our members. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I mean, there, that created a ton of diversity because there was so little known. There was a lot oh, yeah. of fear. Yeah. Um, fear mongering that was being done in social media basically to get eyeballs on screens mm -hmm. and that type of thing. So uh, what I did, uh, I did keep my coaches kind of involved, Right. Uh, but I did a ton of education on myself and learned everything I could about the virus at the time. Okay. Um, understood what, um, at the time, Dr. Fauci and those were saying on mm -hmm. the best way to cope with it so that you didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there was the inevitable shutdown. Right. Um, and we actually shut down a little bit earlier than was mandated to us because I just thought it was the right thing to do. Correct. Um, because we, I didn't have enough data. Right. And I would, I was going to err on the side of caution for the safety and health of my membership. Mm -hmm. uh, and we pivoted pretty quickly to at-home workouts and Zoom calls, keeping the same schedules. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and just moving it to, to, to online uh, very quickly and getting my staff up to up to speed on how to execute on that. What do you think helped you attribute to your pivot to be able to come to a decision point that fast from you know, King, making the decision to shut down to making at home workouts? What helped you? What helped you develop that uh, decision making skills? The, the simple driving force is that we um, it looked very. Um, very serious that uh, we were all going to be shut down, mm -hmm. and that uh, the health and welfare of my community was uh, paramount. Okay. So how do I make that happen? And the way to make that happen is to loan out my equipment yeah. so everybody's got something that they can defy gravity with <laughs> and give them the accountability and support that they need during a time of uncertainty. Okay. Okay, so we did that. And then I continued to watch the news every day, kind mm -hmm. of drove me crazy, and as I saw that we could start opening again about a week before that, and I would take them. Mm -hmm. I figured out how I could follow all the executive order mandates, right? Right. Of, of keeping uh, people distant, of making sure that uh, equipment stayed clean, mm -hmm. um, that the floor stayed clean, and that uh, basically everybody was able to stay safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's worked out. Uh, we're thousands of check-ins in now since we started uh, we came back in May 4th, so that's mm -hmm. been a happy year, yeah. no, no related cases of COVID within the gym. And uh, I believe that we have, um, you know, grown more resilient because we're more fit right. than the people that have just um, kind of hit under a rock <laughs> and not done anything, <laughs> right, right? Um, because of, of fear mm -hmm. that, that to some degree I feel has been generated by social media and the, and the, uh, the, the 
national news. Yeah. Okay. So because mm -hmm. um, we are adamant of, of of respecting COVID, but mm -hmm. uh, understanding that the best way to combat it is through fitness. Right. Is through your health. Right. Mm -hmm. So those have been my things. Make sure that everybody that wants to has a chance to remain fit mm -hmm. during the crisis. Right. So that's that's kind of that was my driving force for that. Nice. Yeah, so um, I, I guess that was it. So my thing was to step, take a step back, mm -hmm. learn as much as I could, mm -hmm. right, about the adversity that was going on, and then execute steps, helping with my staff. They took over a lot of the remote coaching for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think I did all the classes the first week, had them kind of sit in, watch how it was done, and then move into that. Um, created programming specifically for at-home wads, mm -hmm. right? So not a lot of barbells were available. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then executed and pivoted as we, uh, we, we needed to. And as I saw different things happening on the horizon, pivoted mm -hmm. to how do I open up as soon as I can? Right. Right, because um, there was that need to, there was the demand to, to get us back open as soon as possible. So during this whole, so when we got back into the gym too, where we're at now, um, what are some behind the scenes stuff that, you know, as far as like um, interactions with the coaches, you know, how the coaches were able to have, you know, they had, I, from my side, they had buy-in. Yeah, yeah, we've got our own communication channel yeah. uh, rather than Facebook. Uh, yeah. We use Slack um, to, to talk about everything from mm -hmm. the next day's workout and how it should be managed to them understanding um, how... Uh, how to lay out the equipment for the next day, right? Right, and, and some of the precautions we take so there's mm -hmm. not as much congregating uh, around to uh, decrease any kind of spread of, of the deal. So, um, yeah, we have an open channel that basically it's a radio, right? You yes. Just, you just put out your message or whatever and you get feedback mm -hmm. um, and this, that, and the other. Um, and we cover for each other or we bring this, that, or the other up that mm -hmm. hasn't been thought of. And um, we fix it before the community ever sees it. Right. And every day kind of just runs calm on the <laughs> yeah, outside. Yeah. Although, although, you know. The feet are kicking underneath the, 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 the Yeah, the ducks yeah. paddling yeah. really hard underneath the exactly. water. Exactly. So, yeah, so there's a lot of communication yeah. um, on, on just about everything. And, you know, we've got a cap of 12. Mm -hmm. so a lot of times we hit that and we only have 10 pieces of equipment. So we figure yeah. out what we're going to do there to, to, to make sure that everyone stays safe. Right. So, cool. So, uh, those are the steps, right? Yeah. Get by in. Uh, empathize first, right? And that oh, opens the door to... to take yourself to out of the internal mode and external. Right. Mm -hmm. There you go. And create uh, some empathy, some yeah. buy-in. Yeah. Um, define a well-laid-out plan, looking for information from everybody in the group. Mm -hmm. that um, Because everyone is crucial and might have uh, certain... Perspectives, and we'll be talking about perspectives and leadership uh, in another part of the series. Oh, yeah. But um, and then execute your ass off and <laughs> adapt to change oh, yeah. as soon as quickly as you see it coming. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, never get too comfortable. Yeah. Right. You can't get comfortable in LZ, can you? No, you can't get comfortable in the gym. Head, head, on, <laughs> head on swivel. Always. Right. All right. So we'll leave you for now. But uh, that's how to lead in the in, in the area of, uh, when you're in a in a tough situation. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and look for more. Take care.